Back in July 2018, construction workers in the city of Alexandria, Egypt, made a startling discovery. A massive black granite sarcophagus buried beneath the streets of the city. The sarcophagus was one of the largest ever found, measuring approximately 9 feet long, 5 feet wide, and 6 feet tall. Its size, and the fact that it was made of solid black granite, made it an object of great fascination and curiosity. The discovery of the sarcophagus was made during construction work in the Sidi Garba district of Alexandria. The workers were excavating the area to prepare for a new building project when they came across the massive stone coffin buried beneath the ground. The sarcophagus was in a remarkably good condition, despite being buried for centuries. The lid was still sealed, and there were no visible signs of damage or decay. This led archaeologists and historians to speculate about the potential contents of the sarcophagus and the identity of the person or people buried within. Initial reports suggested that the sarcophagus may have belonged to Alexander the Great, the famous Macedonian king who conquered much of the known world in the 4th century BCE. However, this theory was quickly debunked, as the sarcophagus dates from a much later period, likely the Ptolemaic period of ancient Egypt. Further investigations revealed that the sarcophagus likely dates from the 4th century CE, which was a period of significant upheaval in the history of Alexandria. During this time, the city was in decline, and there were frequent invasions and conflicts between different factions and groups. Despite the lack of evidence for a direct connection to Alexander the Great, the discovery of the sarcophagus was still a significant find. The size and grandeur of the coffin suggest that it belonged to a person of great importance, perhaps a wealthy or powerful individual from the Ptolemaic period. The discovery of the sarcophagus also raised questions about the potential contents of the coffin. The lid of the sarcophagus was sealed, and there was no visible damage or decay, which suggested that the contents of the coffin may be intact. This led to some speculation about what might be inside the sarcophagus, with some people suggesting that it could contain treasure or other valuable artifacts. However, this theory was quickly debunked, as it is unlikely that a wealthy or powerful individual would have been buried with their most valuable possessions. Instead, it is more likely that the sarcophagus contains the remains of one or more individuals, perhaps members of a powerful family or dynasty from the Ptolemaic period. The sealed lid of the sarcophagus also suggests that the burial was carried out with great care and reverence, and that the person or people inside were considered to be of great importance. In defiance of the forewarnings about the old, 2,000-year-old sarcophagus, archaeologists proceeded with the enlistment of Egyptian military engineers. Mostafa Waziri, the Secretary General of Egypt's Antiquities Ministry, said that the opening of the sarcophagus did not result in any curse. Waziri remarked that the sarcophagus is extraordinary due to its massive size, marking it as the most significant discovery of its kind in Alexandria. According to the Antiquities Ministry of Egypt, the skeletons uncovered from the sarcophagus were believed to be soldiers, and there was indication of sharp instrument fractures in one of the skulls. The sarcophagus, aside from its skeletons, was exposed to sewage water, which expedited their decay. Oddly enough, around the same time, a petition has garnered the support of 17,000 individuals who were seeking to consume the red coffin juice. More specifically, they intend to ingest it in the form of a carbonated energy drink in an effort to harness its supposed powers and ultimately succumb to death. As per the statement of the Egyptian Antiquities Minister, the pharaoh punch does not contain anything that you would want to drink, further saying that it definitely won't extend your life. After its discovery, it was transferred to the Alexandria National Museum for conservation and further study. As of right now, the discovery of the massive black granite sarcophagus in Alexandria was a significant find that has captured the imagination of people around the world. The discovery of this sarcophagus has provided a glimpse into the history of Alexandria and the ancient world and has raised important questions about the lives and legacies of the people who lived during this period. The Lost Labyrinth of Egypt The impressive pyramids and massive structures that line the banks of the Nile River have long baffled historians and tourists alike, and we can only guess at how the ancient civilization managed to complete such enormous marvels of engineering. But this puzzlement does not stop at our own time period. 
Records of visitors professing their astonishment at Egyptian construction date back even thousands of years. In fact, some of these records indicate that at one point there might have been a structure even more impressive than the pyramids to behold. Many ancient visitors to Egypt described an incredibly sprawling temple complex that they referred to as the labyrinth due to its twisting corridors and hallways so intricate that one would only be able to successfully navigate the interior in the company of a knowledgeable guide. This labyrinth was documented in writings beginning in the 3rd century BC and continuing through the 1st century AD by ancient authors as well as ancient Greek historian Herodotus, who wrote of his experience visiting Egypt. This I have actually seen, a work beyond words. For if anyone put together the buildings of the Greeks and display of their labours, they would seem lesser in both effort and expense to this labyrinth. Even the pyramids are beyond words, and each was equal to many and mighty works of the Greeks, yet the labyrinth surpasses even the pyramids. The varying accounts, although occurring centuries apart, are all relatively consistent enough to allow us to paint a general picture of what the structure might have looked like. However, none of these accounts indicate whether the passages were maze-like as a deterrent to intruders or as a show of the wealth and power of the Egyptians. The labyrinth was said to contain over 3,000 rooms elaborately decorated with hieroglyphs and paintings of impressive beauty. Generally, descriptions indicate that the structure consisted of 12 complex courts surrounding an elaborate maze at the centre, with a roof made out of a single stone slab, a feat almost impossible to imagine even with modern technology and equipment. One aspect that is not agreed upon in the many accounts of this fantastical place is the reason for constructing such an immense project. Among the alleged purposes are a tomb, a temple, a gathering place for religious ceremonies, or simply a testament to Egypt's power and greatness. Although the many independent accounts leave no doubt as to whether such a structure existed, archaeologists have yet to find such a location, despite identifying several potential sites for further excavation. Cheese found in an Egyptian tomb is at least 3,000 200 years old. It is no secret that ancient Egyptians were known to produce pyramids and tombs as ways of preserving and housing the deceased, especially for individuals whom they held in high esteem and considered and designated as particularly respectable. Although the first thing that typically comes to mind when someone hears the word tombs is mummies, however, that is not the only finds one will encounter within a tomb. Often alongside with the carefully wrapped deceased corpse or mummy would also be other objects such as food, tools, clothing, jewellery and even pets. This is due to the fact that it coincided with the beliefs pertaining to the afterlife that ancient Egyptians believed in and propagated. Instead of thinking of once you passed away as a stopping point, in the eyes of ancient Egyptians, loss of life was a continuation point. They preferred the belief of an afterlife to which passing away served as a doorway. They believed that the deceased souls would encompass a series of judgments before Osiris, whom they believed to be the god governing the afterlife. The deceased member would have to successfully pass to be awarded a paradise-like afterlife experience. This is also one of the reasons for the infamous, magnificent inscriptions and illustrations found alongside the walls of tombs. Tombs were often erected far prior to the person passing away as a preparation for their impending inevitable conclusion on earth. This is precisely why so much thought and effort were placed into the tombs and how they were fashioned. The ancient Egyptians' views of the afterlife seem to have been the very reason for one particular discovery in Tarm's tomb. Dating back to the 13th century BC, Tarm's was an esteemed official governing in ancient Egyptian society. Due to his high rank and positioning, naturally, a tomb was erected in his honour. His tomb was first discovered back in 1885, but ended up being unfortunately lost for two centuries due to strong sandstorms that masked the site. However, in 2010, archaeologists were once again reunited with his tomb site, and this time, with much better luck, 
as they have managed to do a better job of salvaging their finds. As thrilling as it was to come across Tarm's tomb after what was thought to have been a discovery forever lost, there was something else about this tomb that stood out to archaeologists. As archaeologists were dusting sand off the artifacts they had found, they got their hands on one particular jar that appeared to have a great quantity of some type of mysterious residue. After some further analysis conducted to identify what the substance was, the results came back identifying it to be none other than cheese. This was a discovery that shed light into the diets of ancient Egyptians and simply the fact that they too ate and produced cheese as a delectable treat just as many of us of the modern day enjoy as well. The cheese was most likely made from either goat or sheep's milk. In its fresh form, it is predicted to have had somewhat of an acidic tinge taste-wise and a consistency that was soft and mushy and easy to spread. Not only did the analysis conducted on the cheese confirm that it is indeed cheese, but it also pinpointed the presence of a bacteria responsible for an infectious disease called brucelliosis. Valley of the Golden Mummies At the Baharia Oasis, a breathtaking discovery was made, an acropolis which contained various tombs of great importance. 105 mummies were found, all in idyllic condition for bodies so old. The area came to be known as the Valley of Golden Mummies, and it is theorized that there may be 10,000 mummies buried here, deep in the earth. Dr. Zahi Hawass discovered them about 380 kilometers from the pyramids. It was an accident when a guard's donkey's leg fell through a hole in the ground. They found gold glimmering beautifully down below and decided to excavate. Alongside the bodies, four tombs dating back to 330 BCE were found. Some mummies were gilded and obviously wealthy citizens, merchants and their loved ones most likely. Some mummies were wrapped in linen a more economic approach at mummification. It seems that sometimes whole families were laid in the same graves. Archaeologists found one female mummy's head laying on the stomach of a male mummy, assumed to have once been her husband. Further artifacts were found, such as gold, jewellery, pottery, coins, bracelets, rings, earrings, and all types of precious metals ranging from silver to bronze to gold and even ivory. The burial site included little clay statuettes of mourners. The point of these was for them to weep for the deceased for eternity and let them never be forgotten. Other statuettes were found of mothers who symbolized fertility. Empty vials were found and the largest speculation is that these held tears for the loss of life. The tombs lacked any inscriptions. What started off as an accidental discovery of gold turned into an excavation of 105 mummies, which since its initial founding has become 200 mummies. This has revealed an incredible amount about Romanized mummification during this period and the culture of the ancient Roman-influenced Egyptians. All this greatness occurred because a donkey took one wrong step and its leg fell through the sand. The fact that the most grandiose of discoveries are found by complete and utter accident makes one wonder how many more things lay beneath the ground, hidden right underneath our very feet. Buried temples, lost tombs, concealed cemeteries overflowing with bodies and skeletal remains from the beginnings of humanity. The potential is endless. We can only hope that we will manage to uncover more brilliant historical sites which will reveal to us the secrets of our ancestors. What knowledge did they possess that has since been dispersed by the winds of time? Will we ever find out? For now, it remains unknown. A Mummy Wrapped in Ancient Manuscript Back in 1848, at the height of demand for ancient Egyptian artifacts on the black market, a Croatian official by the name of Mihalo Baric took a vacation to Alexandria where he purchased from an Egyptian black market vendor a freshly recovered sarcophagus containing a female mummy to bring back with him as a travelling souvenir. Although this would be incredibly illegal and difficult to accomplish in the modern day, during this time the purchasing of ancient Egyptian artefacts was more than commonplace for those living in the region, 
and would not become far more strict until the rise of further popularity in archaeology and Egyptology during the rest of that century. This purchase, however, would remain in private collection until it was donated by its inheritors to the Archaeological Museum of Zagreb back in 1859. Prior to this donation, Mihalo Baric took it upon himself to remove the linen wrappings of the mummy to preserve them in a separate case as the female mummy was preserved in another. It was due to this removal of the wrapping that the Archaeological Museum of Zagreb would discover that the inside of the linens contained a strange writing originally believed to have been Egyptian hieroglyphs. It was not until about 1870 that German Egyptologist Heinrich Brusch would make the discovery that the writing on the linens was a different language altogether, leading them to theorise that it could have been an Arabic translation of the Egyptian Book of the Dead. This led the researchers into contacting an expert of the Coptic language of whom would later claim that the language was that of Etruscan and was untranslatable. Today, today, the writings on the linens have been copied down and made into a book known as the Linen Book of Zagreb, which is the longest Etruscan text that has ever been discovered. To this day, no one is entirely sure why the mummy was covered in Etruscan text or what the text could possibly mean. The Massive Ritual Structure in Egypt One of the strangest and most recent discoveries made in Egypt in the modern day took place on the 20th of September back in 2018. Located in the Hidal Demidash area, a massive ritual structure had been unearthed by a small team of archaeologists that measured out to be roughly 50 feet long and 50 feet wide. The strangeness of the site is compounded by the conflicting number of artefacts located in the ritual structure that have led to further speculation as to the structure's day-to-day -day activities. Pottery with the image of the ancient Egyptian god Bess, the god of music and fertility, have been found all throughout the structure's remains. Although the pottery would not lead to such conflicting theories, the strangeness of the structure comes to fruition after a small adjoined building had been discovered alongside the massive ritual structure that holds a number of priceless Roman artefacts, including a Roman-styled bath used for religious rituals in Rome. Considering the fact that the ritual structure is found just 12 miles outside of Cairo, such a discovery sparks controversy that such a ritual site would find itself conjoined with that of another religious practice. Despite these conflicting discoveries, Archaeologists and Egyptologists have theorized that the area used to serve as a place for ancient Egyptians and Romans to perform rituals for the purpose of fertility and ritual cleansing, with two separate areas used to respect religious differences and acceptances. The Mystery of the Sphinx Originally a theory posited by the groundbreaking author Robert Temple, there appears to be overwhelming evidence that the Sphinx we know today was actually an attempt made by a pharaoh of the 4th dynasty to do nothing more than to claim the works of those before him. Evidence for this can be found when analysing the head-to-body ratio of the large statue. The head on the Sphinx is so small that many had often believed, upon first sight, that it could have been grinded down from a much more massive structure. The second piece of evidence is provided by the hieroglyphics located at the temple of Tep Tufa that outline in great detail that the original god of ancient Giza was Anubis as well as including the accounts and images of Anubis in his jackal form drawn all throughout the site in the same pose as of the body of the Sphinx with no mention of a lion of any kind at the ancient city. Interestingly enough, this exact same pose was discovered in one of the only tombs of an Egyptian pharaoh ever discovered that had been completely undisturbed since his burial, the tomb of Pharaoh Tutankhamun. Within King Tut's tomb is a shrine to Anubis that demonstrates an exact scale of the Sphinx statue but with the head of a jackal to represent Anubis, showing in overwhelming evidence that the original statue at the ancient city of Giza was supposed to be that of a jackal-headed Anubis and not that of a lion's body with a human head. So, where do we get the idea of a human's head and a lion's body? The truth is, the only reason why the statue is referred to as a sphinx is because of old Greek mythologies, such as those of Oedipus, that talk about a lion with the head of a man called a sphinx, but no such symbol exists in that of ancient Egypt. This means that the hieroglyphic texts 
that described the Sphinx with a human head to represent the pharaoh of the 4th dynasty were nothing more than forgeries by the then pharaoh to take credit for a great statue of which he had not created nor designed. Why this is remains a mystery to this day. The Mystery of the Nonsense Hieroglyphics For decades, a group of Polish archaeologists have been working to excavate the Saqqara Necropolis, or City of the Dead. This necropolis was in the ancient capital of Memphis. Inside is filled with ornate tombs, obvious that this particular necropolis was reserved for royalty. Nearby, in a dig taking place in September of 2018, Egyptologist Kamal Kareskovitz and his team were working in an area between the Pyramid of Doza, the oldest pyramid in the world, and the Dry Moat, a long rectangular ditch surrounding the pyramid. It was here they discovered something out of the ordinary. When tombs of royalty or other important people are uncovered, they are often filled with grave goods symbolizing their importance. Some are even labeled with hieroglyphics. Modern hieroglyphics have been around since roughly the 32nd century BC with the first full sentence appearing in the 28th century BC. The written language consists of over 1,000 distinct characters. With this ancient language unlocked, researchers can decipher all kinds of things about the tombs they decorate, including who they belonged to. That was until the dig near the Pyramid of Doza. Here, the team found roughly 500 simple burials. These burials were simple and in no way as neatly done as those of the royals. One could even call them clumsy. It is thought that this could have been a burial site for the working or middle-class people. The team went on to say that the embalming was very basic and the bodies were placed directly into pits in the sand or into now much decayed wooden coffins. Although the coffins had much damage and were often found empty from looters, one coffin remained intact enough for the team to study. On the lid, where the name of the deceased would often go, were what is best to be referred to as imitation hieroglyphics. They didn't make one bit of sense. The researchers believed that possibly the painter was illiterate and simply tried to recreate glyphs they had seen before. Furthermore, figures of Anubis, guardian of the underworld, were painted in blue instead of his usual black. They described the coffin as beautifully clumsy. Some believe that although the burials are simple and nowhere near the grandeur of the royal, that everyday people still practice the same funeral practices, or even that the funerals of the royal were mimicked without pure understanding. As we have come to learn, the mummification and burial process held great religious beliefs in the Egyptian culture, great tombs and burials aimed at supplying a glorious afterlife. Maybe this was just one person's go at giving their loved one a chance at having one as well. What did ancient Egyptians look like? Although it might seem safe to assume that ancient Egyptians resembled their modern-day counterparts, this is not necessarily the case and is a topic that has been hotly debated for many years. The current residents of the Nile Riverbank are descendants of sub-Saharan Africans who migrated north with dark skin and hair. However, depictions from the periods of powerful ancient civilizations show an array of skin and hair colors. Of course, the easiest way to answer this question is through DNA sequencing of remains from the period in question, but such a conclusive analysis was not possible until recently. This was largely due to the fact that handling and analyzing ancient bones generally contaminates the sample so badly that it leaves more DNA than the sample originally contained, leaving it nearly impossible to distinguish the ancient genes from the modern ones. It's only been in the past few years that researchers have learned to distinguish the chemical makeup of ancient DNA from the modern contamination. This, along with the high levels of humidity and heat in tombs that are unfavorable for DNA preservation, has meant that researchers were not able to obtain a reliable sequence of genetic material that could answer the burning question of what the builders of the famous pyramids looked like. In 2017, researchers were able to obtain 166 bone samples from 151 mummies, dating from 1400 BC to 400 AD. From these samples, they collected viable DNA from 90 individuals, reliably completing entire genome sequences in three of these individuals. However, what they found was not what many people expected. 
Remarkably, the ancient DNA most closely matched that of the current occupants of the Eastern Mediterranean, including Turkey, Iraq, Israel, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. Although it is possible that other later civilizations of the Nile River Valley represented other modern-day regions, the residents of the time periods when these mummies lived, during the New Kingdom and Middle Kingdom when Egypt was controlled by Rome, were the early relatives of today's Near East cultures. Further sequencing revealed that modern-day Egyptians share far more of their DNA with Central Africans than with the ancient Egyptians, and that this change only occurred in the last 1500 years. Historians and researchers attribute this migration of people and their respective genes to either the trans-Saharan slave trade, causing the forced northward migration of thousands of native Central Africans, or the increased mobility and trade along the Nile and down within Africa. The Treasure Chest Revealing Clues to Thutmose II's Lost Tomb an unbelievable discovery has been made at one of the largest archaeological sites in Egypt, Deir el-Bahari. Archaeologists uncovered a buried stone chest, holding some interesting items which could date back to over 3,500 years ago. The individuals credited with its discovery were from the University of Warsaw's Institute of Archaeology from Poland, with Professor Andrzej Nowinski leading the investigation efforts. It is believed that this discovery can lead us to the lost tomb of Pharaoh Thutmose II. Deir el-Bahari is a site near Luxor and Karnak, two other successful excavation sites, and is a remarkable complex of monuments and tombs meant for ancient Egyptian nobility and royalty. The tomb of Hatshepsut lays there, and the Polish archaeologists have been working tirelessly on this site for the past 60 years. The chest was discovered by sheer luck, found in a pile of heavy debris which resembled nothing more than another segment of an ancient building's wall. Professor Nowinski, when interviewed by the media, explained that it was only after they gave the debris a closer look that they realized what it was, a chest intact and full of archaeological treasures. The chest measures 40 centimeters in width and length. All the items found inside the chest were wrapped in bundles of linen canvas to protect them. Three vital items were found. There was a skeleton of a goose. Historians have since hypothesized that it was sacrificed for religious purposes. The second item was an egg of the goose, potentially representing the life contrasting the departure from life symbolized by the goose. And finally, the egg of an ibis bird. In ancient Egypt, the ibis bird held immense spiritual value, much like the cat. Next to the stone chest, there was something else wrapped in a bundle of linen, a wooden box with the name Pharaoh Thutmose II engraved on it. The box was in the shape of an ancient Egyptian mortuary chapel. The items and wooden box all pointed towards it belonging to a member of the royal family for certain. Professor Nowinski shared his thoughts, claiming that the royal deposit indicates that a temple or a tomb was being raised in the pharaoh's name. The evidence steers this theory due to the fact that the site is in the middle of a royal cemetery. The likelihood of it having been a tomb is immensely high. The found boxes suggest that there was indeed a time when the pharaoh was buried at this site, though whether he is still hidden somewhere deep around the area or if at some point in antiquity his body had been moved elsewhere is unknown, as the tomb of Thutmose II has been deemed lost for thousands of years. The pharaoh himself was only in control of Egypt for a mere three years, from 1476 to 1479 BCE, and was recorded to have passed away at the age of just 16. When he was alive, he was married to his sister, Hatshepsut, Though incest in the bloodline of Egyptian royals was considered normal at the time and often was only done to keep the power within the family for political reasons. However, the young pharaoh seemed to have been nothing short of a political puppet for his sister wife, who went on to rule over Egypt as one of its first female pharaohs and her reign was regarded as powerful, prosperous and great. As soon as the stone chest and wooden box were found, the team hurried to try and find the tomb of the lost king believing it to be hidden in plain sight. Perhaps the eternal resting place of the pharaoh had caved in through the millennia and could be found with a little harder work and digging. 
The archaeologists involved believe they are incredibly close to discovering the tomb of Thutmose II. And if they prove to be successful in their quest, then this will mark one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of this century, if not the greatest discovery within the last millennium. This tomb would be completely untouched by the looters of the past and could give us a never-before-seen insight into what an authentic, untampered with royal tomb looked like and the truth into Egyptian burial rites. The last time an untouched tomb was found was that of the famous Tutankhamun, which had been abundant with treasures upon its discovery. Thermal Mystery of the Great Pyramid The Great Pyramid or Great Pyramid of Giza is home to many mysteries. Because of this, many researchers, scientists and archaeologists are constantly examining and studying it. Before our previously mentioned discovery in 2017, there was a whole series of studies going on, but in 2015, whilst conducting thermal examinations of the Great Pyramid, researchers discovered that three stones located at the bottom of the pyramid were a higher temperature than any of the others. Whilst this discovery itself is truly puzzling, it could be the result of a variety of different factors, from differing air currents inside the pyramid, even more small undiscovered areas, or perhaps an anomalous building material which could indicate repairs or strength carried out thousands of years ago. The team of scientists and researchers came from around the globe to carry out these thermal tests. The tests themselves are just as interesting, as they would examine and carry out testing during different times of the day to test different theories. The morning around sunrise was a specific time the researchers would carry out scans whilst the sun was beaming onto the limestone blocks and heating them up. They would then carry out the same scans but in the evening around sunset once the same limestone blocks were cooling down. They continued these tests until they found the aforementioned anomaly of the three limestone blocks in particular that would display a difference of around 6 degrees compared to the rest of the block which would at most show a temperature difference of around 0.1 to 0.5 degrees between sunrise and sunset. This difference in temperature is quite puzzling when compared to the minimal difference of the rest. These affected blocks in question were located on the east side of the pyramid. This could well have something to do with why they are anomalies, but for now this remains a mystery. The mysteries and discoveries that we've discussed today really do encompass the world's fascination with the ancient world and the need to understand all its intricacies. The Great Pyramid is always under constant study and research. The pyramid scanning we talked about with the Great Pyramid has also been continued on all of the other major ancient pyramids as unlocking secrets of one could help unlock those of the rest, and even help us to understand ancient Egypt as a place even more. The discovery of the unfinished obelisk that taught us so much about how the other obelisks and monuments were made, so this continued effort made to examine, research and scan the pyramids really is incredible. Another interesting fact to look at is the depiction of the builders of the pyramids in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. It's a common fact known amongst Egyptologists that the ruling class of ancient Egypt was often depicted as two to three times the size of the average population. This is believed to be due to the importance of the figure and so it was required to depict the ruling class in such a manner. However, others have put forward a different theory which suggests that these depictions were far more accurate than previously known and the ruling class of Egypt could have been an advanced race of giants. So where does this idea come from? Well, believers in this theory point to the multiple carvings of giant humanoids that appear on ancient artwork. Back in 820 AD, the Sultan El Rashid Al Mamun, dedicated to open the Great Pyramid, was told that the structure had been built by giants, who were referred to as the Shedai, which roughly translated to superhuman beings, and that within these pyramids they had stored a great treasure beyond the knowledge of man. This means that not only were the Egyptian depictions of the ruling class accurate, but that neighboring nations were well aware of the usage of the giants that labored the construction of the pyramids and had developed advanced technologies far beyond the reach of human beings at the time. Of course, this theory is not believed by modern science, and they say that as of today, there is no proof of this. Regardless, there are many people put there that believe there is a deeper meaning to the pyramids and that the ancient Egyptians would have needed a massive amount of help in the form of brute strength. Even some researchers have come forward and said that the current theory of how pyramids were built is hard to grasp.
But what do you make of these Egyptian discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.